All right, Braves fans, let's get rolling. I'm George McNair, and this is State of the Braves. Well, guys, obviously I'm going to come to you with a little bit of a downer. I mean, you guys know Braves country is kind of reeling right now with the news of Spencer Strider's arm injury. Uh, we're certainly going to get into that today and will be kind of the heart of what we talk about today. But, you know, you guys know that I'm a pretty optimistic guy uh, and I love this team. One of the primary things I talked about going into this season was the extreme depth of this team. This team that Alex Anthopoulos has built has, has been built to withstand even an injury to Spencer Strider. Most teams would not be able to, uh, to survive something like this. And yet the Braves honestly are in, still in very good shape, uh, believe it or not. So you kind of have to step back. Uh, the emotion is, is natural. Um, it's going to be really disappointing. It is disappointing. It's disappointing that we're very likely not going to be able to see Spencer Strider perform out there on the mound this year. We don't know specifics yet. So on one, you know, in one sense, we don't want to jump to too many conclusions, but when you he hear UCL tear, uh, UCL damage, uh, it's really hard to believe that he would be back at all in 2024. So, uh, the Braves have not said anything like that officially. I want to make sure that that's clear. Um, I'm obviously not an orthopedic surgeon or anything. Uh, it'd be kind of cool if I was, but uh, that is not on my resume. So that being said, um, I think we can all kind of assume uh, that when Max Fried misses half the season with just elbow inflammation, if you're talking about UCL tear or damage in any kind of way with a, a, a guy like Spencer Strider, uh, you can imagine the Braves are going to be super careful with however they deal with that. And uh, I think it's incredibly unlikely we will see him in 2024. And of course, Tommy John surgery might be looming for him as well. So all of that is certainly in all of our minds. And the, uh, the success, potential success of the Braves in 2024 is certainly something that I'm sure all of us Braves fans are thinking about. So, you know, we don't have a ton of details on Spencer Strider's injury just yet. He came out of the game the other night. Uh, obviously, he wasn't himself in his game against the Diamondbacks. He comes out of it uh, after four innings, though, you know, he pitched kind of a, a full, I think it was around 90 pitches when he came out. So I think some some questions are should be asked about that. Why was he able to, to go that long? I don't know that it maybe did any further damage, uh, but clearly he was trying to gut something out that was uncomfortable. Uh, came out of that game complaining about his discomfort and uh, then the MRI the very next morning revealed damage to his UCL. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we will be certainly waiting any further news on Strider. And, and if, again, I think it's a, it's a small hope, but if he might be available at all in 2024. Um, so, yeah, if, he, if this does require Tommy John surgery, guys, it would mean he would be out until mid to late 2025. Um, and this would be his second Tommy John surgery. He had his first Tommy John surgery in 2019 when he was at Clemson. Uh, you know, the whole story of how he changed his mechanics, changed how he did things. Uh, of course, you know, all his leg, leg work and, and his, uh, tremendous quads and all that got, got built after that first Tommy John surgery. So, you know, as much as Strider is a freak about his health, and his mechanics and his stretching routines. Uh, it's just a reminder that throwing a baseball at 98 miles an hour continuously um, and repeatedly puts tremendous strain on the elbow, uh, no matter how massive your quads are. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's remarkable. Everybody talks about, you know, Strider not being that big of a guy. And, um, and he does uh, some really unique things with the body that he's been given, but uh, yeah, his arm again, uh, is, um, is injured right now. So it's just a reminder that pitchers are very fragile. It's the reason why you can never have too much pitching or too much pitching depth. Uh, and the Braves do have that. I mean, that's the good news, but it's certainly going to be tested once again this season. So as we kind of all digest Strider being injured, I think there's some really important things to focus on that are true. Um, and to try to reject some of the emotion that comes with, um, I think, uh, one thing I would say about 
baseball media and, and kind of the national uh, baseball media is they tend to overreact uh, to uh, Braves injuries and Braves news like this because most teams uh, are not as deep as the Braves. Most teams are not as talented as, as the Braves and they would not be able to withstand um, you know, an injury to a guy that was, let's be honest, he was the, the, the favorite to win the National League Cy Young this year and, and he goes down for the Braves and, and most teams would not be able to um, sustain that kind of injury, but the Braves can. Um, and so anyways, I want to go through a few things that are true uh, that we can really kind of hang our hats on. Um, first, a reminder, you know, baseball is a grueling marathon of 162 games and many injuries. And, uh, you know, here the Braves are having to, to sustain this major injury to their best pitcher uh, in the first week of the season, basically. Um, but, you know, that's probably going to happen to most of the teams out there. There's going to be a pitcher or two that goes down. There's going to be a major player that goes down for each of these teams. Um, and, you know, the team that rallies the best uh, and has depth to cover up those types of injuries are the teams that are going to be proven to be worthy of winning the World Series. We've seen this very recently, even just last year with the Rangers. You know, they uh, they lost to Grom um, pretty early in the season. They eventually lost Scherzer in the playoffs, and yet they they had enough. Number one, they had uh, enough of a an offense to cover up some of their pitching deficiencies, but they had enough pitching depth. Um, just enough, but they did have enough pitching depth to win it all last season. And the same held true for the Braves. You know, the Braves, when they won it in 2021, their pitching staff was not full um, by any means. I mean, we remember kind of the, the patch jobs the Braves had to do throughout the playoffs to win it that year. And of course, the Braves also lost Ronald Acuna midway through that season. And they still had um, enough depth internally and then you know they actually obviously had to go out and make some trades but um that's certainly on the table this year too for the braves i'm going to get into that but you know it really is about um what you got in that clubhouse and uh, i think you know the braves have have enough um and they have the right kinds of guys to step up in the face of something like this so you know what also is true is the braves season is not over by any shot kind of already mentioned this but media and fans especially outside of atlanta will overreact to this news they'll say that the braves are dead um but no team in baseball is better built to withstand a kind of loss like the like this even though it's hard i mean it does stink let's not uh sugarcoat it um watching spencer strider throw every fifth day is really awesome you know when we lose that we lose that probably for at least the 2024 season um and of course everything is going to get harder for the braves uh because we don't have him pitching every fifth day um but they can do it you know these guys can still do it even without strider i really believe that um the top of the first last last night um saturday night with freed on the mound was probably the lowest point i was thinking about this you know it's probably the lowest point the braves have been uh since acuna went down with his torn acl right i mean i remember the emotions of that season 2021 was a hard regular season the braves were you know just struggling to get to 500 then acuna tears his acl and it all looked lost and guys let's not forget how that season ended and um and so that's kind of how i felt last night you know striders um you know this news comes out and then freed comes out and and gives up six in the top of the first inning against the diamondbacks he looks lost he looks incredibly frustrated but what happened you know he rebounded he seemed to figure it out in a lot of ways i think he got mad out on the mound and he started pitching like the max freed we know um it was still a frustrating night for him but he gutted it out uh and got through what was it four or five innings which was needed for the bullpen um and the braves what happens you know they come back and it was an awesome awesome comeback to be down six nothing to be down eight to two the braves offense guys it is unique it is and i've talked about this before but it's just worth repeating uh, they're the best offense in baseball, and that carries 
a lot of weight, and it's going to carry them through some games where they don't have the best pitching. Um, even last year with some of Strider's blowups, they still won some of those games. You know, so they're just they're they're just fine. You know, they're going to be just fine. And sometimes these kinds of losses, um, they make you better, and it it doesn't always make sense. You know, that's the thing with sports. You lose a guy like Strider, he's one of the best pitchers on the planet, and somehow it causes the team to rally around each other and everybody uh, kind of lifts each other. And that's what's going to be necessary, and I do think that's the kind of team this is. Obviously, Max Fried is going to have to be better, and I think he will be. I think he'll take this challenge. Uh, I'm not worried about him, by the way. Um, you know, it's it's worth repeating, and everybody's going to say it, but it is early. It's early, and not every pitcher is going to start the season rock solid. And I think Freed is the kind of guy who, you know, he he has great stuff, but he also requires some pinpoint command. And, you know, his stuff is not quite there right now. But it did start looking better after he got out of that first inning. You know, the, his first start, he just couldn't get out of the inning, and then they had to take him out. And, uh, you know, obviously after the first uh, in the last game, he was able to come back and be much better. And hopefully he can just figure out that first inning thing. And uh, we get the the Max Freed Cy Young candidate that we, uh, we're we used to. Um, okay, so the other thing that's true, uh, and it has been true even before Strider went down and we knew it, but newcomers Chris Sale and Reynaldo Lopez are more important to this team than ever. And their additions... Uh, that Alex Anthopoulos made, you know, bringing them in just looks so critical now. Um, so glad that he did that. And the early returns are good on both of these guys. Sale pitched today, Sunday, uh, his second start. He's looked good in both of his, his starts today. He, he went five and a third innings, uh, two, two earned runs, six strikeouts, got his first win as a Brave. Ronaldo Lopez in his first start looked really good. Six innings pitch, one earned run, five Ks. Um, you know, 95 mile an hour fastball, really good slider. And I mean, that's encouraging. If you get six good innings from Ronaldo Lopez every fifth day, man, that's going to be massive. You know, a lot of people were questioning the Braves moving him back into the rotation. And very clearly, um, I mean, certainly they didn't know what was going to happen with Strider, but very clearly that was a wise decision. And I think it's going to end up paying off. Now, he might fall off a cliff and, and, the Braves might have to figure out something else to do, but but right now, um, him and Elder, sorry, him and Sale are really important. We're going to talk about El Elder here in a second. Um, all right, the other thing that is still true is the Braves guys are still the prohibitive favorites to win the National League East. Losing Strider, I've heard a couple pundits say this, and it's just not true that they're saying that losing Strider just brings the Phillies and the Braves right next to each other. And it's just not true, guys. The Braves are still the much better team offensively and in the rotation. I mean, I will just take it all day long. I think they have a better bullpen. I just think across the board, the Braves are better. All the numbers, all the projections back that up. And, uh, you know, I know it's super early in the season, but even the start to the season um, backs it up as well. Um, so, you know, through... Through eight games, the Braves are averaging seven runs per game offensively. And, you know, that's with a couple of games. They had to play those stupid games in Chicago in the terrible weather. And, you know, one of the games they only scored two runs, and the, the weather was just ridiculous. And so, I mean, honestly, guys, with them being back in Atlanta, I think they're just going to crush the ball. And uh, that has been uh, the case. And all of that is without Ronald quite being himself yet. I don't know if you all have noticed that, but he's striking out a lot. Um, he's not really hitting the ball in the air very, very uh, consistently uh, or um, really making hard contact like we know he will. And I'm not worried about him. I just know it hasn't happened yet. And uh, so they're doing, you know, they're scoring seven runs a game without Ronald being a major part of that. So the Braves offense is elite. We know it. And it's going to carry them through in a way that other teams just don't have that. Um you know, there's been several very good early signs as well. Uh, with some of these guys, I call these wild card players, guys that, you know, they're not as consistent. You're just hoping they have good years. They, you hope they get off to good starts. And three of these wild card players have absolutely done that. Marcelo Zuna, guys, um, 
has been a, one of the best hitters early on in baseball this year. Uh, carried over his great 2023 with an awesome start. He's currently 11 for 35, four home runs, uh, 10 RBIs, and just is hitting the ball really hard um, all over the all over the ballpark. Jared Kelnick, this has been awesome to see him get off to such a great start with the Braves. Everybody was freaking out over his terrible spring training, but guys, he was making adjustments and simplifying his swing, and it's all seemed to come together. His power hasn't been there yet, but I think that will come. I think he's just gotten used to his new swing and 11 for 19 uh, early this season with three doubles. He's hitting the ball hard a lot. Um, and he's just looking like he's having a lot of fun too, which to me is super important. I think he's a guy that's a little high strung. He can get in his head a little bit um, as a young player. And just the fact that he's like right in the middle of everybody celebrating and having fun. And I think he is just, just going to explode this year. And I, I thought that to begin the year, but now that I'm seeing him, I really do think that. Um, and then the other guy, the other wild card, Orlando Arcia. And, you know, I haven't been a huge believer in Arcia, but he's playing really well to start the year. He's um, nine for 26 early on, five doubles uh, to go along with that. So, you know, hitting the ball hard and contributing. Um, so when those guys are hitting well, uh, it just, extends the lineup you know michael harris hit a bomb today um it's just it's just fun to watch and austin riley absolutely annihilated a ball in the eighth inning of um sunday's win uh as the braves swept the diamondbacks you know so in all of in all of this kind of negativity surrounding strider guys the braves just swept the diamondbacks who were the national league champions last year uh we we are rooting for um, an elite team in the National League, and it's just still true even without Spencer Strider. Uh, the last thing that's really true is the Braves bullpen is very good, and you know this matters even more. You you lose a guy like Strider, you might have to cover a few more innings. Well, the Braves have an elite bullpen, um, and this this series against the Diamondbacks just showed it. Thirteen and a third scoreless innings pitched by the bullpen. I mean, maybe they were the MVPs of this series and uh you know all of this is to the wisdom of alex anthopoulos right uh bullpens support pitching staffs and if somebody goes down you might just have to lean on a bullpen that much more um and yeah maybe they'll have to do that um or maybe a fifth starter will step up and it won't be that big of a deal at least in the regular season so yeah it's not to downplay the significance of the loss of Strider. Obviously, it matters. Obviously, it hurts a lot. But, on it, guys. We are rooting for a really good team, really talented team. And I have a lot of confidence that Alex Anthopoulos is doing everything to plan for, like, what the next move might be uh, to, you know, to, to make sure that this doesn't derail the Braves' season because too much is on the line, right? And, this team is set up to win a World Series, and one injury can't de derail that. It, he just won't let it happen. I believe that. So, you know, a lot's been made of actually the rash of injuries that's been going on in Major League Baseball. I wanted to, um, you know, just for a moment, uh, give you my thoughts on what the cause is. Um, you know, the list is very long. If you haven't paid attention across all of baseball, it's not just Strider who's gone down with an elbow injury just in the last week. Guys like uh, Loizaga for uh, the Yankees, Shane Bieber for the Guardians have gone down with elbow injuries, needing Tommy John surgery. Of course, Shohei Otani, Shane McClanahan for the Rays, Jacob deGrom, Walker Bueller is is trying to come back for the Dodgers. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of recent elbow injuries across all of baseball. And these are just some of the big names. And of course, Garrett, Garrett Cole is trying to come back um, with some elbow inflammation, uh, trying to come back for the Yankees. So it's all over baseball. And while there's probably no singular cause, right? Not everybody's elbow uh, and elbow injury is the same, but um, everybody's trying to grasp it at a reason. Uh, MLB Players Union has complained about the pitch clock, that the pitch clock is not allowing pitchers pitch to pitch to kind of recover. Um, 
I can buy that just to a small degree. I do think that that matters over time. And I think pitchers would probably, some would say it doesn't matter. Some would probably say it really does. Um, I think the bigger issue is that pitchers are chasing max velocity. They're chasing as much spin rate as possible. And these two things put tremendous pressure on an elbow. Um, you know, it, so it, I think that's probably the biggest factor. John Smoltz has talked about this forever, that uh, if you are constantly max efforting on the mound, your body will just eventually break down. Anything you do max effort for a long period of time, your, your body just can't handle that uh, no matter what you're doing. So I, I do buy that. Uh, of course, Braves fans, I think, can embrace that a little bit more. I mean, we saw... Greg Maddox and, and Tom Glavin pitch in a way that was very controlled and certainly not max effort. Um, and they never had major arm injuries. Um, at least, you know, I think they talked about um, Greg Maddox's arm was kind of hanging off by the end of his career. But still, I mean, very long careers uh, without major injuries. Smoltz had some injuries, but he was more of a power pitcher. Um, and he threw a lot of breaking balls and, and had higher uh, spin rates and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, it makes sense to me, certainly that a guy like Strider, who's putting a lot of pressure on his elbow with, with high velocity, is going to be um, a little more vulnerable to this type of injury. And, you know, maybe the pitch clock contributes a little bit when you add it to um, – you know, pitching at, uh, at max effort. Um, but look guys, pitching a baseball is just naturally unnatural. And, uh, we're just seeing a ton of, uh, of pitching injuries. And, you know, I, I do think there's, there's something to be said that pitchers are being treated a little bit like these commodities that they can just be thrown away. Um, and, you know, move on to the next guy. And, but that being said, I think the pitchers themselves, might have to just make decisions with their careers of like, maybe I need to kick it down. Like, you know, is Strider going to come back and still try to pitch at 98, 99 miles an hour? Is he still going to do everything the exact same way he was doing? Is he going to try to, um, to change it up a little bit? I, I don't know the answer to that. And I can't begin to think if that would e even be easy to do. Maybe it's not easy for him to pitch at, at 94, 95 miles an hour and start dotting it on the, on the corners. Um, so it's, it's tricky and it's, it's not, I don't think, I don't think it's simple. Um, but if you told me that, that a Bryce elder, uh, might never have major arm issues, uh, compared to Strider. Okay. It would kind of make sense, but, uh, all that being said, uh, it's certainly, uh, an, an epidemic among baseball right now. And, and it's, it's something that you wish, uh, baseball could address or solve in some way. Um, though I'm not, I'm not advocating that baseball would ever get it right or should do anything um, sweeping because they, they usually don't do things well when they try to do that. All right, so back to the Braves, right? The impact of Strider's injury in 2024. And of course, we're assuming things, but I'm just assuming that Strider's at least going to be out for 2024. Okay. So short-term impacts the, they need Bryce Elder and others, um, to step up into this fifth starter role. And I say and others, because it's not totally clear that Bryce Elder is just going to magically step into the, this fifth starter spot. Um, and I say that because the Braves called up Alan Winans today. Um, he was in the bullpen, uh, Elder just pitched yesterday, Saturday, um, and did not pitch well uh, for Gwinnett. Uh, so I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, it, it still makes the most sense, uh, given his uh, experience, that Elder would step in. Um, but even if that happens, uh, and even if Bryce does pitch well, I don't think the Braves view him as a viable playoff starter option, certainly given his second half last year and what happened uh, in his start in the playoffs last year, you know, so he is a kind of guy that, um, you know, I, I believe that he could take the ball every five days. I believe that he could probably be a, um, a successful starter in the major leagues. I mean, he's proven, he proved in the first half of last year that he does have that capability. 
um, even if he's not super consistent with it, right? I think he can he he can give you innings, and I think the Braves can win games with Bryce Elder being your fifth starter. Um, so I think that's the short term solution there, uh, and I think April through July is basically Elder probably is the guy in the rotation. Uh, you allow prospects like Smith Shaver and Waldrop to develop in the minor leagues, right? through July, and and hopefully one of them shows you that they're ready. Um, but, of course, we just say hopefully because you don't know that that's actually going to happen. You can't bank on that. Um, during that time period, right, through July, you, you've got – you're leaning on Freed and Sale and Morton and obviously Ronaldo Lopez as well. Uh, but I think Freed and Sale and Morton are, are obviously your top three guys. Um Ronaldo Lopez, though, he, maybe he steps up. Uh, you know, he he pitched so well in his first start. I think he kind of showed you uh, what he could be. Um, we just don't know if he's going to consistently be that. But, yeah, Smith, Shaver, and Waldrop, obviously these guys have amazing raw stuff, but raw is the key term there, and we can't really expect them to make playoff starts this year, can we? I mean, it would be a great story, and it could happen. I, I'm not saying it won't happen, but it's certainly not something you can assume would happen or that you could guarantee. Um, so a lot is unknown, and I think Anthopolis just knows that. I think it's just going to be a time of waiting, watching, uh, judging uh, over the next few months. What do the Braves really need as they approach the trade deadline? And I'm not saying – a trade is definitely going to happen, but I think he needs to know, do I have to make a move or are these internal options really enough? And, and we're good. Now, when we talk about the trade deadline, you know, the, the Braves just lost one of their playoff starters. Remember when, when Anthopolis added sale, he's like, we need another playoff starter. And they did that by bringing him in, but now they've just lost probably who their game one starter would be in Strider. So um, if no one steps up internally to, to get to that level, which it is kind of hard to imagine internally someone getting to that level, uh, I think Ronaldo Lopez is the only guy that could potentially um, really prove himself to be that level of a starter. And, and even there, I'm, I'm not so sure. So um, – if Lopez or one of these young prospects can't get to that point, okay, now I think you start looking on the trade market at the trade deadline for a playoff starter. But, man, that's going to be expensive, and it's not going to be easy. And it's probably going to be a guy that they're going to want uh, to be in Atlanta uh, beyond 2024 because if Strider does need Tommy John surgery, the Braves um, and their starting staff is really going to be hurting in 2025. So, so 2024, okay, we've, we've covered that, but let's look at the long-term implications of Strider potentially going down. I want to keep using that word because we don't know for certain, but potentially going down and getting Tommy John surgery. And what that would mean, again, he wouldn't return until late 2025. And if Freed and Morton both leave, then the Braves rotation is in serious trouble in 2025 because you would have Sale, you would have Ronaldo Lopez, um, and you'd basically have three spots potentially up for grabs. Yes, maybe maybe one or two of these young guys are ready. Maybe Elder reestablish himself. There are some potentials internally, but again, it's just a lot of a lot of stuff up in the air there. Um, so Alex Anthopoulos has to be weighing this and weighing what you know what the impacts are and, and obviously what uh, his action is going to have to be moving forward. So he might look out on the, uh, the free agent market, you know, in this, uh, this free agent class, there's quite a few guys still left unsigned that you could go out and sign, but I'm going to tell you guys, none of these guys excite me. And none of these guys seem like long-term options. You've got a lot of old dudes uh, in terms of pitchers still out on the free agent market. Hinjin Ryu is 37. Zach Grinke is 40. Johnny Cueto is 38. These are not guys. Maybe they're filling guys, but the Braves, again, th their depth is okay. Uh, it's high end. You know, they just lost a playoff starter, and I don't think any of these guys scream that. And they certainly don't scream, I need to go out and sign these guys to a two year deal. Um, so, going back internally, 
extending Max Freed seemed to just gotten more necessary. Um, and the hard, the hard thing with extending Max Freed is, um, Alex Anthopoulos doesn't ever allow himself to be painted into a corner or to feel like he's forced into making any kind of decision. So I, I really don't think the Strider thing is actually going to affect what Anthopoulos does with extending Freed. But I mean, on the surface, obviously extending Freed would alleviate a whole lot, um, to, you know, bring him back and cover, uh, the loss of Strider for 2025. Um, Will this actually happen? We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, I'm sure the talk is going to really ramp up. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see um, Alex negotiating from a point of weakness. I think he'll probably hold the line of basically where he's, I'm sure he has offered an extension to Freed, but I'm, I also am sure that he's going to hold the line where he is. Now, if Anthopolis can't extend Freed, then I think another option is you go to Charlie Morton mid-season, see where he's at, see if he wants to come back for one more year. You know, there's been a lot of assumptions that this will be Charlie's last season, but maybe he has a good year. Maybe he's resurgent. Um, maybe he's still feeling good and is healthy, and you, you just tag on one more year to the guy. And he certainly is not a dummy. He knows that the Braves at this point could probably really use the pitching. But mid-season – he might be breaking down. I mean, we just don't know where he's going to be. So you're not going to extend him immediately. I think you just have to kind of wait uh, towards the end of the season to see what happens with him. So that gets you to the trade deadline, right? And again, a lot is fluid. A lot could happen between now and uh, July 31st. Uh, but if the trade deadline does come uh, and the Braves need a guy to step in and potentially start some playoff games, uh, We'll see. We'll see. I Again, those types of guys are going to be really expensive, and especially guys who have two years left, uh, two years of control that could cover 2025. I mean, a couple guys, I, I'm not going to throw out a bunch of names right now. Paul Blackburn for the A's has pitched really well. Of course, the A's would probably be willing to sell anybody at any time. He's got two years left. Is he a playoff starter? I mean, at his best, maybe he's a game three starter. Um, Jesus Lazardo for the Marlins. Of course, the Marlins is are one and nine. I mean, they they're probably already <laughs> selling. I, I don't know, but um, he would be very expensive. He's got um, two years beyond this year, um, so I I don't even know if that's realistic. Even if the Marlins are selling, they might view him as a long term piece. Uh, and it's just hard to predict who the sellers will be at the trade uh, at the trade deadline. But again, finding any starter who's not just a one-year rental, is going to be tough. Um, so that it does put the Braves in a really tricky position. I'm just going to be honest. But look, in the meantime, we can be bummed about Strider um, and, and not getting to see him every fifth day. It just does stink, you know, and it's part of baseball. It's part of the game. Um, and, you know, we, we've experienced some of that recently. Uh, in some ways, you know, Last year, it was almost more frustrating because you had this yo-yo of emotions back and forth with Freed and, uh, you know, and with Wright thinking they're coming back. Then they don't. Then they do. Um, Strider, I think we're, we're probably soon going to get some, some certainty that he won't be back uh, anytime soon. Uh, I think the other thing that we're really going to miss with Strider, and I was super just pumped about, was how much of a competitive fire he he brings to this team and how motivated he was after uh, the end of the playoffs last year. Um, so for him to come back and this happen, it just really, um, it stinks for him and it stinks for the team. I mean, I'm hoping he'll still be a big factor in the clubhouse, but I think it is kind of hard for guys to feel engaged and, and feel like they're fully a part of the team when they're not out there competing. I'm sure Matzik, uh, you know, this last year or two has felt that same thing. So, um, but yeah, you know, it, it, it does stink and, and we can all be kind of bummed about it. Um, but the early signs are obvious that this team is still motivated, um, as motivated as ever. You know, you see these two games since they've gotten news that Strider is down 
and you, you've had actually three games now and you've had um, comebacks, you know, big time comebacks and they, they're playing well and they're beating the Diamondbacks and they don't look shaken at all. Uh, so I don't think they're going to fold. Um, I don't think uh, they're going to, you know, play down. And uh, and that's really encouraging. So, you know, as as I conclude this episode, guys, um, does this mean the Dodgers are now the clear favorites in the National League? I've heard several people say that. Well, perhaps, you know, perhaps. I, I did a breakdown in the um, in the offseason comparing the Dodgers and the Braves. It was a close comparison, though I thought the Braves were the clear, better team overall. Um, when you take away the Braves' best starter, um, I think it's legitimate to make the argument that the Dodgers could be very marginable marginally better but I actually think that's all it is if if they are the better team on paper um, then I think it's just marginal now um, that being said I'm not sure it matters that much uh, because we are so early in the season and honestly anybody could go down at any time I mean for any team and you know I'm not rooting for that not I never root for injuries for any team but um, you know the Braves are still just so deep and talented and uh, even more so, uh, far more so, honestly, than the Dodgers. The Dodgers have these, you know, these high-end talents, um, you know, the first three guys in their lineup, the top guys in their rotation. But, um, but if they go down, I just don't know that they can cover it quite as well as the Braves. And, of course, here the Braves are. They're going to have to do it. But, um, but, yeah, I'm not sure it matters that much. And, by the way, in terms of the Dodgers, I mentioned this before, but I'm still not sold on Yamamoto. He has not looked good in his first two starts. And uh, there, there's a lot of assuming going on with him and uh, with the Dodgers in, in terms of how good I think their starting pitching is going to be. So all that being said, you know, I, I still feel great about the Braves. And the other thing to think about in terms of the best team in the National League, we can mention the Phillies. I don't think the Phillies are, are that close to the Braves still, even with Strider going down. I think the Braves are going to cruise to a division title. It doesn't mean that I don't think the Phillies are good or a threat to the Braves in the postseason. But in terms of the NL East, no. I think the Braves are still the clear favorite. Um, I think the Phillies' depth is really thin. And, uh, you know, if, if either their top two pitchers were to go down or or a Bryce Harper or, or, you know, you fill in the blank of several of their best players, if they were to go down, the Phillies just don't have the depth. Um so, guys, anyways, we can we can hope for the best when it comes to Spencer Strider um, and getting this news on his elbow, but we can prepare for the worst. Ultimately, I hope for Spencer Strider himself that he can get back to 100%, um, that he can have a really successful, long, healthy career with the Braves. And um, I think that's the biggest thing. This is... You know, if it's Tommy John surgery, it's going to be his second one. And, um, you know, not many guys uh, are able to have super long careers with two Tommy John surgeries this early. And uh, so I do worry about him. And uh, I, I'm really hopeful that he'll he'll be able to come back healthy and, and not just healthy, but the Spencer Strider who has taken baseball by storm and, and you know, had these awesome early career records. Uh, let's hope that he can come back and be that guy again. Uh, and the last thing that that this just highlights for me is the Braves' development of top line pitching. Smith Shaver and Herson Waldrop are two of the most important uh, guys in the entire Braves organization. If one or both of those guys becomes really good major league pitchers, uh, it is going to be huge to overcome some of some of these injuries the Braves. Uh, not not just injuries, but the potential loss of Freed, the injury to to Strider, the potential loss of Morton. Um, the Braves have to continue to develop young pitchers, and uh, hopefully that's going to happen. Uh, all right, guys. Well, look, the Braves are going to move on and play a four-game set against the Mets. It's super exciting. The Mets are not playing well. The Braves tomorrow, Monday, are going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Hank Aaron's 715th home run. I think that is so great. I'm just such a huge fan of Hank Aaron and all that he did for the Braves and, of course, all of baseball. So he should always be celebrated. Uh, the true home run champion, right? 
Uh, absolutely. The true home run champion of baseball uh, and just a gentleman of baseball. And uh, I'll certainly be tuning in to celebrate Hank. So, all right, guys. Well, look, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Stay the Braves. I always appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys soon.